Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. We just got done ripping apart Officer Meekin's testimony. Now, Officer Jake Marshall is going to take the stand. We are going to rip that apart, too, if you guys cool with that, you down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. February 24, 1214 p.m., District Court, courtroom number nine. They're discussing how hard I'm going to cook up Officer Jake Marshall. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Oh yeah, chug that. Deep throat that. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Oh, I'm just a man, same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know! You're a patrolman! No, he's a deep throater or something. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howling wind calling it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, Your Honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day the crime took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? A desperado soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us your testimony on the day of the crime. In plain old English. Yes, thank you. Finally, this guy makes sense. Witness testimony. All right, we're already getting into it. Hopefully your eyeballs are warmed up because we got to pay attention. Let's go. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Ooh, this guy's getting a little spicy. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activated locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines, or with following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. I think I know what to do. I think I know what to do, because his fingerprints were on the locker inside the evidence room, but that doesn't mean he was there at that exact time. But his fingerprints were there, so we got to make sure we use that to our advantage. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. Okay, nothing's wrong with that. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. So where were you? But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? I told you that ain't my style. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. No desperado I know lets rules get in his way. No desperados I know join the police force. So, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime, just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. Ooh, that's a lie. There was a rubber glove stuck on the victim's locker. Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner. Can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. What about these security systems? You used to be a detective, so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day, my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism? Sorry, partner. I ain't good with machines. I couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite, uh, incredible. The sensors on the locker handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Now that he mentions it, Detective Gumshoe said something like that too. 
At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. Hold it! What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti and talking to hookers. Not even Angel's steak lunches can beat that parlor's Von Gole Sepia Pasta. I have no idea what that is. Hopefully you guys do. Do you mean to tell us you abandon your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually where Edgeworth says, Did you not want to raise this year? Just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. Okay, I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I'd best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I'd better up the ante. Okay, okay. My job was to keep a wary eye on the Bone Orchard. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Okay, let me see something real quick. Let me check the times people came in. Let's see this. Check. Miles Edgeworth, Mike Meekins, Bruce Goodman, Mike Meekins. Okay, who's 77777777? They came in at 4.20 p.m. I have no idea. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. All right, you know what? I don't know what else to do. So we are going to use this bloody handprint right now. Everybody wind it up and objection! <laughs> Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called in to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet, you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or, to be exact, a handprint. Huh! Listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crypt. I pay my respects. That is, make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. Objection. Oh yeah, object that. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood! Yes, guys, covered in blood. Witness, what is the meaning of this? Your bloodstained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away. However, a luminol test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? It seems to me there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall. About the blood-stained fingerprints? Very well. You may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. Oh, he's gonna revise his testimony, huh? You guys locked in? If you're not, you better do it right now. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. No, it's not. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the blood-stained handprint. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See? I had nothing to do with it. How did you know the murderer had gloves? Hmm. The witness's explanation appears valid. Although... There's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy's hiding something. I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Okay, let's go. There's a lot of things to question here. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprint to be in that evidence room. No, it's not! It really isn't. That's because you... How do you put it? Pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I say. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently his fingerprint data was never removed from that locker's programming. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without even knowing it. Marshall's fingerprints updated in the court record. 
Found on a bloody handprint on Marshall's own locker, the print had been wiped. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. So then, what about the bloody handprint? Was it mine? It's no mystery. Please explain! My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. Hmm, I doubt it, buddy. The chances of that happening are a million to one! On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward from me with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? The bloodstain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kinda like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast while the other's a type of murder. He's right! Although seemingly alike, they're totally different! I don't see what homonyms have to do with this. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? How did you know he was wearing gloves? How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a blood stain at the scene, thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm, so that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? This seal of blood in the desert is just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. So long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me in that video, right, partner? What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this crime, isn't that right, partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, they could leave the room without being caught on tape. Objection. Don't object that. That's logical. We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Oh, I might as well try. I got a lot of chances, right? I might as well try. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Show us this incriminating evidence of the witness, Officer Jake Marshall. Okay. Uh-oh. I gotta really look carefully. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me pause everything. Okay, nothing looks out of the ordinary there. Let me see the guy when he comes up. Let's see here. What is that in his hand? Oh, that's nothing in his hand. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Let me just keep looking at this. I'm facing a strike, guys. Wait. Bam! The glove, right? Nobody was wearing gloves. <gasps> wait. No, wait. Hold on. That doesn't make sense. Okay, I actually don't think that's it. Because I think the glove is irrelevant. Because that's supposed to be the guy that died, right? So let's see here. Let's take a look again. He comes in there. Okay, looking like a doofus. There's Officer Jake Marshall's locker on the left. Okay, let's see this fight going on. Nothing out of the ordinary again. How convenient is that flag, though? Like, covering the face. You gotta be joking me. Alright, let's see this. Okay, let me pause something here. Let's see. 
We got all the lockers, right? Nothing out the ordinary. We got that thing that you can shoot. We got a fishing pole. All the lights are off, right? All the lights are off. Everything's good. Nothing looks weird. Okay, let's keep going. Let's pan back this way. And then Meekins is gonna be on the ground, yeah. And then the guy is gone. The guy is gone, but there's only one way in and one way out. So we're assuming that he's ducking underneath the camera, right? Wait, 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 wait. Look! That wasn't there before. That was not there before. Hold on. Hold on. Rewind. It was not there before. There is a cloth sticking out at the very end, and there wasn't a cloth sticking out before. Okay. So watch this, guys. No cloth, right? Let's play this. Okay, we got Officer Meekins there again. And then we are gonna pan back to the left. Can I get a drum roll, please? A brrrr, bam! There is your evidence. Take that! Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. The days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video! Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. Watch. Oh, never mind. I thought it was going to show no cloth and then cloth. That locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Okay, let's do a rewind sound effect. It's so slow! Like, rewind it faster! We've seen all this. We know dumbass Meekins is going to be knocked out right there. But if we go back... No cloth. Where did it come from? It's like a, like a magic trick. Oh! The white cloth! It's gone! What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then, it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Yes, guys, turned away! His head, away! Order! Order! Oh, God, I couldn't even finish the judge's sentence! Hold your horses. Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needed to hide something, so he opened a locker and stuck it in. Yes, but you need the fingerprint to open your locker, so we're going to rip apart that too. It's not my fault he happened to choose mine. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? Because you need the fingerprint to open your locker, dumbass. This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade. But you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I'll call your bluff. You say I open that locker. Now prove it! Okay. All we gotta do is show the picture of the locker. Only a signed detective's prints can unlock it. Indicator lamp lights up when it's open. Take that! Uh, fingerprint sensor? We talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? Oh, yeah, bite on that. Looks like my ball sack. I only got one wolf for you, partner. No! Got him! Yes, guys, got him. Two words or less. Order! 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 Witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke... It's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Ole, please answer the question. What is he now, a bullfighter? 
That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can? Have a look at these floor plans. There is no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet, Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? What? Where was he? Was he this guy? Was he K? Well, he had to have been K, right? Because he's not V, so he is K. <laughs> Officer Marshall was standing right here. Hmm. So Officer Meekins didn't notice him standing there. That's almost as credible as Meekins' warp theory. The chamber's empty, partner. Better reload. Oh, that wasn't it? Now they're ganging up on me. Perhaps. You should think a little more about where Officer Marshall was. Officer Meekin should have seen him in the evidence room. That means the only place he could have been would be... Okay, so if he wasn't K, then he had to have been V, so take that! <laughs> Officer Marshall was standing right here. There? But that's... That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was! Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you, dressed up like Detective Goodman. Objection. Don't object that, that was awesome. But that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. Objection. May I point out though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his card, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me! Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say about this, Officer Marshall? You've got quite an imagination, partner. We got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert heat. Ugh. This can't be happening. So obvious he's the one. What can I do? Huh. It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics? Why is Edgy Boy always helping us out? I love him so much. For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was open in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then, 
after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. Was it to wipe off the blood because he was fighting with Meekins? Because that is cloth. He could have wiped off some blood. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that. He opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps... Perhaps the video is the key to all our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Very well. Let's take yet another look at the security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put away the white cloth. Please show us why the witness had to open his locker. He was bleeding from his shoulder. After he fought, uh, Meekins. I remember that, because I wanted to point it out in the last video that he had blood on him. But it was irrelevant to the case. Alright, here we go, guys. They're about to fight. So let me start pausing it. He has blood right there. Blood right there! No, 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 no. Uh, rewind. Rewind a little bit. Right there. He had to wipe off the blood because he would have just been dripping blood. So then he, like, wiped the blood off with the cloth. And then put it inside of his locker to hide it. So I am going to click this and we are going to say... I TAKE THAT! For some reason, you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman and enter the evidence room, though I don't know to what end, yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled the knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked and the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, partner. Uh-oh. We got him? Did we... Woo! Now then, Officer Marshall. Are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago. If you were only half as persistent then as you are today. We all wouldn't have to be here now, now would we? Officer Marshall! Tell the court what you did! All of it! Alright. It seems the time has come. Witness testimony again? Bro, I thought we were done with this. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out and managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It was way too much blood for such a small donation. Cross-examination? What? I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. What? What die? What's dying? When you say it, you mean... Do you even have to ask, partner? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When the case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost, I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why I... I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I plan to take out the evidence. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transferal, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? 
I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out the lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker yourself. But he could because the rubber glove just happened to get stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins, I knocked him out and managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. But the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim shown on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So, you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where's that evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Yes, guys, still missing. Nobody's found it. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I'd better take another look at the files. What files? Are we talking about the files that we got before this whole trial thing? The one over here? It was like Joe Dark, right? Let me see this. Check. Okay, incident number SL9 closed. Perpetrator Joe Dark, crime, serial murder, sentence, death. Damn. Victims, Edward Jones, Jason Knight, Edith Kirby, Rachel Moss, Jeb Bates, Neil Marshall. Is that Marshall's, like, brother or, I don't know, dad? Trial data, head prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth, witnesses, Lana Sky, Emma Sky, executive investigators, Damon Gant, Lana Sky, head investigators, Bruce Goodman, investigators, Jake Marshall, Angel Starr. Okay, so now we know that there's a guy with the same last name as him. I think that's why he doesn't want to let this case die. But well, we got to find out the right statement to, like, use it on. Hold on. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just let it stand by and die. I think that's it. I think that's why. Okay, so let's go back. Let's present these files. The Joe Darkey. We're going to wind it up and... Is it an objection? Is it? I think it is. OBJECTION! Your Honor, that statement contradicts the evidence. Oh, my goodness. I messed up. Okay, I think that's the right evidence, but I don't think that's the right testimony to use it on. Okay, I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. Let's hold that. So you did your research beforehand. Those who go in the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. The security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you blooded your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is, on that day... There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. I had a feeling we'd wind up here... Okay, I gotta figure this out. I had to do it that day, I couldn't just stand by and let it die. We already questioned that. So to take this idea and just like in my plan to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. You pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. I'll have to think a little more about his raise this year. Why did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me and it ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry it had to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Hmm, 
So you knocked Officer Meekins out and... Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer? This is no small offense! Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. Can't just forget the SL9 incident, you know why? But that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for his crimes. One thing I can say for sure is he deserved his sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how it turned out. But there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one will talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think his real reason is. Because Marshall, Neil Marshall. Okay, uh, we gotta go back to that statement. So, let's see. Where's that SL9 incident? There you go. I can't just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? I know why. We are going to present it right now. We're gonna wind it up and we're gonna say, OBJECTION! Officer Marshall. I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago. He received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, the then deputy chief of police. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. That's Joe Dark? Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. That guy looks badass, to be honest. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least, according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me! Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with this resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. The things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, 
This fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance. It's got to be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. Yes, object that. Uh, but wait, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Objection. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But there's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remain the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me, this boy's got the draw on you, partner. All of the mysteries at the police department have been resolved. No doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Skye. And the testimony of one Miss Angel Star is completely incontestable. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Ah! Do not take a bow. Come on, Eiji. I rest my case. Guys, please. It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Disproving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize that would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. The court finds the defendant. Thank you. Whoa! Where'd you come from? Your Honor, wait! Emma! The defense has an objection. A scientific objection! Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright! Are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor... Oh, uh, in a sense? Please, Your Honor. All I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. What a nice guy. I... I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dart killings. Now that she mentions it... The names of both Sky's sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So I ran over there and looked at it again. So did you find something? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Come on, you're being a good for nothing. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them, Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. With regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um... It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Yes, Your Honor. If I've ever needed to concentrate, it's now. Okay, what could be wrong with that handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? I object or there's no problem. I guess we gotta object! If I say there's no problem, then we're done! 
His handprint left at the crime scene. Clearly shows the contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is your grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plans? Okay. Uh, was allegedly dancing in the evidence room at the time of the murder? Was it that? <laughs> or was it this? Jar pieced together from fragments found at the crime scene. A piece is missing. Is it the doll? Let me just say it. Maybe it is. Okay, we're gonna present it. We're gonna wind it up and say, I'll take that! What about that piece of plywood? The blue badger. Mascot of the police force. Defender of truth. Guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Yeah, just right there. Well? Well, what? Duh. That's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. What? Yes, impossible, guys. Impossible! So that means, uh, just exactly what does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma, on that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in? Just one moment! I will not allow such far-fetched balderdash in my courtroom! It may sound far-fetched, Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice! B but how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been... It had to have been... Detective Goodman, when he was really murdered! Objection! That's ridiculous! I refuse to accept your absurd claim! Objection! Yes, object that objection! The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. Objection! He objected my objection to that objection? So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize, the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, Another incident took place in that evidence room. That's right. The blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well. Then tell us. When did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edgeworth said, proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defense please present its evidence? What shows when the crime first took place? Well, the only thing that we have is the ID card record because that shows anytime someone goes inside. So at 440, Miles Edgeworth popped in. At 450, Mike Meekins popped in. 514, Bruce Goodman. And then 514, Mike Meekins again. It had to have been at 420 p.m. when 7777777 popped in. So we're going to wind it up one time for the homie DJ Screw and we're going to say, Attack that!
If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card. Oh! The ID card record! Officer Meekins brought the Blue Badger panel into the evidence room at... Let's see here. 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be... 4.40 p.m. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Miles Edgeworth! Just what have you done? I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Huh. Nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test that the blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means, the blood from the first crime was wiped away. By the real murderer. I would have just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. We're not blaming you, we're blaming this! 4.20 p.m. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. There's only one other card number remaining. 7777777. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand... He must have entered along with a real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with 77777777! Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP! Find out whose ID number is 77777777! That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least, at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number is 7777777 belongs to someone with a rank of captain or higher. Someone who is a so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. But that's ridiculous! Just how? I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against an executive is accepted. An official charge? You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. Yes, guys, that is how they operate. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Yes? No, not to you. To her. The defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number. And it's not 77777. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing. About that incident. The SL9 incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we... Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. Lana... I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant! Just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to. 
in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana, even if it involved forging evidence, why is everybody forging freaking evidence? Everybody just love forging these days, huh? See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! Order! 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 Lana's remarks caused such a stir. The chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial would have to wait until the following day. Damn. The jury's still talking. You guys hear him? Talking that bullshit. All right, guys. Well, to be continued, we just got like a well of information poured on our souls. If you guys want to see what is about to happen next, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like and tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude. <laughs>